welcome to the take civil learning my dear friends i promised you just give me your 30 to 40 minutes time you will surely going to understand the concept which is mentioned in the thumbnail so without wasting our time let's start the today lecture so in the today lectures we will going to design a doubly reinforced sections or doubly reinforced beam in the previous lectures we have already designed a singly reinforced beam that we have already analyzed the means doubly reinforced beam so if you have not gone through that video please go and watch that so that it become very easy for you to understand the further study right if you know if you really know that it means the design steps of singly reinforced beam then it's very easy for you to understand the concepts of doubly reinforced beam so and uh, please watch the video based on the analysis of doubly reinforced beam so in the today video we will solve a numericals so let's see we need to design a rectangular beam right we need to design a rectangular beam of sections 230 mm into 600 mm where 230 is the width of beam at the same time so 600 is the depth of overall depth of beam and its effective span is already given that is 6 meters so effective covers of the reinforcement is is kept to be 50 mm means effective cover is also given so imposed load is given and we need to use m20 grade of concrete and the fe415 steel that that is hyst so means uh, first means before solving the problems we have to write the given data from the questions so as as means uh, from the given data the width of the beam is given that means overall depth is given so, so clear cover is given clear covers is represented as d dash i hope you know all these things because we have already discussed about the multiple times about all these things so where m20 grade of concrete is given right and fe415 is given so, so without wasting time let's follow the design procedures right so means if you follow the design procedures it's very easy for you to understand so as usual so that as we did in the singly reinforced beam in the steps one we calculate the required dimension of the beam so here also we need to means uh, calculate but here width as well as depth is given so we need to calculate effective effective length but the effective length is also given in the questions itself if, if listen carefully my dear friends if if effective length is not given or effective span is not given in the question directly then hope you know how to calculate the effective length that is means from the is code book 456 page number 34 there will be the formula for calculating the effective length or effective span so let's see page number 34 yes we are in page number 34 of is 456 2000 so as you can see the effective span for the simply supported beam can be calculated as clear span that is if the clear span is given in the question but in our questions effective span is already given right i am means uh, telling you here that if effective span is not given then how to calculate that is clear span plus effective depth else means a uh, clear span plus center to center supports right means center to center support of the wall so hope you know and we have already solved these types of problem in the single reinforced beam so we have to follow the same procedures for calculations of effective span so from the questions as it is given so no need to calculate it's already given so effective depth that overall depth minus clear covers right overall depth is 600 and clear cover is 50 so it is 550 hope you have means clears on the means step ones and remember one thing so that if f effective length is not given then you have to calculate the effective length instead of effective length if clear cover is given sorry if clear span is given right if clear span is given then you have to calculate effective length similarly in step two we have to determine that mu limit mu limiting is the limiting carrying capacity of structures right means how much means moment can carry the structures right before failure right so it is the means limiting what you call limiting moment carrying capacity of a structure so this can be calculated by using formula here there are the means different types of formula can be used right and you you need not to be means what you call remember this formula it is already given in is code book page number 96 so let's see yes we are in is 456 page means code book of page number 96 so as you can see here the mu limit formula is 0.36 xu max by d 
means of means of 1 minus 0 0.4 to x u max by d into b d square of f c k so i have substituted this formula here right so means uh, as you know for means uh, 415 right that is x u max by d is equal to 0 0.48 it is also given in the code book is 456 page number 70s right for means 415 4250 right here for 250 for 500 there are different value of x u max by d we are in page number 70 so uh, as you can see x u max by d right for 250 0 0.53 for 415 is 0 0.48 right for 500 is 0 0.46 so from here i have taken x u max by d is equal to 0 0.48 for 415 i will substitute this value here right so here 0 0.36 into 0 0.48 right because x u max by d value is 0 0.48 into 1 minus 0 0.42 into into 0 0.48 uh, into right means b width of the beam is 230 right at the same time so d means effective depth effective depth is 550 so 550 square because d square and fck is 20 right as you can see it's 20 so uh, calculate all these things we will get this value in newton mm right so we need to convert this one into kilo newton meters so while converting newtons right in kilo newtons then we have to divide by thousands at the same time means so while converting mm into means uh, mm into that is meters then we have to again divide by thousand so means uh, totally means we need to divide by thousand into thousand then you will get 191.976 and we will get the value in kilo newton per meters else you can calculate means mu limit by using this formula directly right so no need to means uh, worry about all these things you can calculate as you like or as you feel the easy so mu limit we already calculated let's calculate the mu means what you call ultimate moment that is ultimate moment is nothing but m u so mu before calculating mu we have to calculate certain thing that is the self weight of beam self weight of the beam is nothing but b into d into right density of the concrete so b is 230 d is 600 right and density of concrete is 25 kilo newton per meter cube so means uh, convert these all unit in meters so 0 0.230 into 0 0.600 into 1 right means uh, per meter into 25 so we got self weight of the concrete is or beam is 3.45 kilo newton per meters at the same time imposed load means live load is given 40 kilo newtons so summation of these two loads it gives the total load that is total load is 43.45 so as it is limit state design methods we have to assume a factor load so we know the factor means the safety of factors of the concrete is 1.5 so ultimate load or factor load mu mu is equal to 1.5 into 4345 so means here the questions arise why we are multiplying with the 1.5 my dear friend for the safety purpose right means before the fractures it should have so some means safety right and i have already discussed all about the partially safety factors right means in the previous lecture so if you have gone through that video you have no doubt at all so ultimate moment that is ultimate moment for the simply supported beam is given as mu l square by 8 where means sorry w u l square by 8 where w u is all from here that is factor load l is the effective a span or effective length that is 6 divided by 8 so here the ultimate moment is 293.2875 from these two from these two value as you can see the mu is greater than what you call mu limit sorry sorry from these ones mu limit right not w but mu limit we need to see the step first so if, if you see the step first that is 191 value but if you see the mu limit is 191 at the same time uh, mu is 293.28 so we know that if mu li if if mu is greater than mu limit then there is a means uh, what you call collapse of the structure takes place either you have to increase the overall depth right to satisfy the conditions or else we can design the doubly reinforced beams so as mu is greater than mu limit so we're going to design a doubly reinforced beam by providing the extra reinforcement in the compressions as well as in the tension zone 
so we will design doubly reinforced without changing its dimensions right and i have already explained all these things about in the analysis of beam so now in step 4 we will calculate ast1 right and hope you know ast ones from the analysis if believe me if you have seen the analysis video there is no chances of arising the doubt at all so ast is the area of steel in figure 1 so ast can be calculated right means to as you know for the balance sections and from the figure 1 that is c is equal to t that compressive force is equal to tensile force it it is given in the figure 1 in the analysis of the structures so compressive total compressive force is given at 0 0.3 36 FCK BXU limit we know this formula at the same time so the tensile force formula we also know 0 0.87 FY AST1 so FCK value is 20 B value is given XU limit already we have calculated now means uh, how we can calculate XU limit right so uh, my dear friends XU by D XU by D 4415 is equal to 0 0.48 right Four, eight. So from here you can calculate XU that is 0 0.48 into D 0 0.48 into D 0 0.48 into D value is 550 then you will get the value of 264 equal to 0 0.87 into F value is 415 and into AST. So means uh, for calculating AST we will means uh, put or we will substitute all this value in the division form of these equations then ultimately you will get 1 to 10.9 mm squares so the area of steel of the sex of the of the figure first is 1 to 10.9 mm squares so similarly now we will determine the mu2 right mu2 we have already also discussed about in the analysis of beam right mu2 is the means uh, what we call extra means uh, what we call extra reinforcement or means extra which can withstand the means what you call mu right as mu is greater than mu limit so withstanding this value we need to calculate mu2 right mu2 is the means what you call most resisting of the means provided by the compressive steels as well as additional tensile steel yes so here mu2 is equal to 0 0.87 f by ast d minus d2 so mu2 can be mu2 can be written as as you as you see in the analysis of the beam that is mu by mu minus mu limit and 0 0.87 into 415 into ast and d minus d dash this formula is given in the is code book 456 so fck b x u here everything we can we have calculated ast right sorry now we'll calculate so means uh, mu value we, we know mu limit value we know so if you subtract that is 293 minus 191 so right similarly 0 0.87 fy is 415 ast2 as ast2 and d is 550 and clear cover is 50 so from here we have calculated ast2 ast2 comes 561.20 means ast1 and ast2 we both have calculated means total ast area of steel reinforced in tensile zone ast means area of steel in tensile zone right so by calculating total ast we will do ast1 plus ast2 right means ast1 plus ast2 that will give you from 296 only so total ast value come 1772.1048 mm square so we have already calculated the area of steel in tension zone now we will in step 6 we will calculate the area of steel in compression zone so uh, for calculating these ones we need to follow means stress uh, means strain diagrams from the page number 96 so and already we have discussed about how to derive this formula in the analysis of doubly reinforced beam so that's why i'm telling again and again please go and watch that video it's very easy for you to understand so a strain of steel in compression equal to 0 0.0035 xu limit minus d dash by xu limit where xu limit is 264 d dash means uh, d dash is 50 and xu 264 so the strain comes 2.8737 2.837 into 10 to the power minus 3 right this is the value of a strain of a steel in the compression zone so means if if we have the means what you call a strain value 
then from the stress strain that diagram if you know the strain value then from the stress strain diagram suppose somehow air it is like 2.837 2.837 into 10 to the power minus 3 then from these diagrams we can easily calculate the value of what we call stress the value of stress so from the stress strain diagrams right from the stress diagram we need to calculate the stress of steel in concrete sorry in compression zone that is fy by 1.11 means 1 fy divided by 1.15 it is safety factors of concrete so let's see page number 70 yes we are in page number 70 of strain vs stress diagrams right for the mild steels as well as this one is for the mild steels and this one is for the what you call means hyst bar right so i have already discussed about in the previous lectures right uh, uh, for the what you call for mild steels and the hyst so for mild steel it is constant but at the same time for the means what we call hyst as you can see means this one's fy and this one's is fy by 1.15 so if you substitute if you go through these ones then what its value come right so from these ones we'll take uh, one randomly value right suppose 0 0.89 into right fy divided by means 1.15 else you can use sp chart 16 from the sp chart 16 right book you can easily means uh, do means uh, you you can easily interpolate this calculation so let's take means uh, from this diagrams we'll calculate the stress value so here i have did 0 0.86 into 415 divided by 1.15 so the value come 3 tens so by round off i have increased i have taken 352 right so you can take it as you like so from the from the page number 96 uh, means uh, as you know means uh, now we need to calculate what asc right asc area of steel and compressions right already we have calculated fsc right uh, means uh, so we can easily calculate now asc right for calculating asc we are doing all these things so asc is equal to mu minus mu limit by asc d minus d dash this formula is given in is code book page number 96 only so for calculating asc else you can use this formula or this formula it depends on you both formula will give the same answers so the one formula is this one's also right that is fsc into asc is equal to 0 0.87 fy ast2 so fsc we have already calculated above that is 352 352 asc we need to calculate we will keep it as you as it is 0 0.87 into fy 415 and ast2 will be we have already calculated means ast Two. here we have already calculated ast2 value so we'll just substitute there so right 562 so from here asc comes 575.67 so this is the area of steel in the compression zone we have calculated area of steel in tension zones so from this area we can easily calculate how many numbers of bar are required to placed in compressions as well as tension so we will assume 20 mm of bar for the tension zone right for the tension zone that is from the bottom of the beam for the tensions so we will need to calculate means act means uh, what you call for means means uh, area of uh, area of bar right means area of one bar so a small ast is equal to pi by 4 into 20 so for the area of one bar it comes 314.15 so for the number of bars a is capital ast by a small st so 5.6 came so in round of six numbers so in the tension zone we need to provide six numbers of bar of having 20 mm diameters right now in the compression zone right number of bars asc by a small asc asc value we already know 575.6 and asc means asc will be same because i have assumed the same diameter of bar that is 20 means it's depend upon the designer right either you can substitute 60 mm of bars in the compression zone also so it's totally depend upon the you and the what type of structures it is so here come 1.83 so in roundup we'll take two numbers of bar so eventually it comes right we'll provide six numbers of 20 mm diameter in the tension zones and two numbers of 20 mm diameter in the compression zone till now here i hope you have cleared all your doubt so we have means uh, sorry for inconvenience right my dear friends now step 7 is same as of singly reinforced beams right for the design reinforcement 
there is no difference between singly reinforced and double reinforced. It is the same procedures, right? You have to adopt the same procedures what we did in singly reinforced beam, right? So here in this one also we need to calculate the shear force due to means design load that is VU. VU formula is WU w into l by 2 and w u value you know that from the steps 1 uh, l value is 6 and divided by 2 it comes 195.525 kilo newtons so we now we will calculate nominal shear stress that is tau v the, this formula will be given in page number 72 of is code book so v u value already we calculate and b is the means width and it is the effective depth effective depth is 550 so we already calculated this ones now we will calculate percentage of steels this one is very important that is means uh, a capital means this ast is the actual ast right means actual ast so actual ast means we know pi by 4 into how many numbers of bar we have provided 6 numbers of bar into 20 so 1885 so this value will substitute here 1885 divided by 2 means uh, divided by 230 into 550 into 100 so 1.49 percentage of steel comes out now will design right means uh, shear strength carried by concrete right the 4 m20 concrete right as the percent of the steel required oh, that is 1.49 so for 1.49 how much it means what you call design of shear strength of concrete so for that one you, we need to follow page number 73 now we are in page number 73 of is code book 2000 so from here what is the uh, means what equal percentage of steel hour is 1.49 so we will see this one is percentage of steel in this column so 1.49 right it lie between means uh, 1.25 and 1.50 right in between here somehow it is it will be 1.49 right so what we will do we will take that one for it is for m20 grade of concrete so for means what it calls it means uh, design shear strength of concrete tau c uh, tau tau c will be equal to for 1.25 0 0.67 and for 1.5 means 1.50 0 0.72 so we will means take out these two value and we will by doing interpolation methods we will calculate means uh, the means what it calls uh, strength shear strength of concrete of 1.49 percentage of steel from the means is code book right 1.25 it is 1.67 and 1.50 it is 0 0.72 so hope till now you have been by but by doing interpolation methods i mean say tau c at the rate of 1.49 is equal to means this one's 0 0.67 plus right because it is increasing in order 0 0.67 0 0.72 it's increasing in order if it is decreasing in order then at that time we will subtract so you adds it is in means increasing orders 0 0.67 plus bracket right this one 0 0.72 minus 0 0.67 divided by 0 0.50 minus 0 0.25 into what we need to calculate for 1.47 so for 1.49 sorry 1.49 minus 1.25 right and 1.25 no, this one by doing this calculation we will get 0 0.718 from this here we can easily assume that from 1.50 it is 7.2 and hence 1.49 is smaller than 1.50 so the value comes out is smaller than 0 0.72 that is 0 0.178 so as tau v is greater than tau c so we have to design as means we have we have to adopt a shear design right so in this case means from the page number 72 right means we can see this conditions from page number 72 let's see page number 72 here we are in page number 72 here it is said that if when tau c exceed tau means we're sorry when tau v exceed tau c right and it's already exceed right that is tau in our uh, uh, numericals tau v is greater than tau c then at that times we have to means provide following forms either the vertical stirrups or the bent up bars so any stirrups we have to provide so here we will provide vertical stirrups and hope you know vertical stirrups what do you mean by stirrups vertical stirrups all we know so before solving that we, we, we will uh, design so that the shear designs by doing vertical stirrups vertical vs vertical stirrups so shear carried by only concrete right means how much sheared force is carried by concrete that is tau c into bd tau c value we know bd value we know so we can calculate right 
now shear carried by stirrups right means uh, suppose this one is beam right this one is beam then we will going to substitute a uh, stirrups right of certain distance so this this ring is nothing but the stirrups right that is stirrups will be in this form provided in the beam right this one is the stirrups so means the shear calculated by stirrups is nothing but the vu if you subtract vus that vu minus vc means uh, subtracting shear force carried by concrete then you will get the means shear calculated means carried by stirrups that is 104.698 is the value of shear stress carried by stirrups now let us assume that we will going to provide 8 mm of stirrups for the two legged vertical stirrups right and hope you know what do you mean two leg vertical stirrups i have explained in single reinforced beam very clearly so we will provide 8 mm of diameter for two leg stirrups for we will calculate asb that is area of means uh, vertical stirrups vertical stirrups so 2 into pi by 4 into 8 so it comes 100.53 mm squares so from page number 72 we need to calculate now we know the area of means vertical stirrups we know the uh, how much shear stress is carried by stirrups now we will going to uh, design means uh, from how much distance right the stirrups should be provided so vus from the page number 76 it is given in the is code book only vus is equal to 0 0.87 fy asb into d by sv so sv is the spacing of vertical stirrups so we will take it out here and it will go here so by substituting all the value we will get means 190.67 so means the distance between the stirrups should be 190.67 center to centers and we as you know my dear friend the maximum spacing permitted is 0 0.75 d that is 41 4 12 12 mm right or the 300 mm right beyond 300 mm we are not going to means uh, design a beam that will uh, uh, will sub will substitute uh, means or will put a stirrups means more th will put a uh, stirrups more than distance of 300 mm so means uh, within the 300 mm we need to space the stirrups as it is means 191 so that's why we're going to design a uh, means uh, stirrups will will going to means provide the stirrups 190 mm near the support right and uh, as it goes means uh, near, near the centers then we'll increase its uh, stirrups uh, means vertical spacing uh, means 300 mm so toward the means uh, vertical center of the spans right means if this is uh, suppose this one is beam right this one is a support given by beam then suppose here right means uh, stirrups distance should be means vertical uh, means uh, 190 mm only but at the mid of the spans it is 300 now means uh, as an engineer we should know why like this right my dear friends the means shear stress is maximum induced at the support only so that's why for that for this purpose we need to design in such a way let's so we have designed already the required means what you call sub value so in the case in the questions if it is given means to check for the deflections then you need to do for the deflections and as do as usual so what i have explained in the single reinforced beam so in this questions it is not given for the means check of the deflection so we will not do all these things if it is said it if it is mentioned in the questions then you need to follow the uh, steps so now see the detailing right my dear friends i uh, means uh, see this one is longitudinal view you can see this one see the supports right supports this one is the two supports of wall and from means center to centers right means uh, it is given effective length 6000 mm that is 6 meters and this one says main bar right means uh, in the longitudinal vertical in the tension zone so six numbers of 20 mm bar is be provided this one says two numbers of 20 mm bar so as you can see means near the supports the distance between the stirrups is what 190 only this type means vertical the distance between the stirrups at the centers is 190 only sorry here it will be 190 190 so in the center or in the mid of the spans it is 300 mm because the shear stress must act at the center means near the supports of the structure so that's why so as engineers if you design any beam then provide the stirrups like this only right so see the means vertical longitudinal or means uh, cross section view as it is 
since it is not possible to accommodate six number of bars in the row within 230 mm width so here it is impossible to fit six number of bars within the 230 mm so what we will do we will make one more row column means row and we will substitute three numbers of bar below and three numbers of bar above overall depth is 600 right this one is 300 means 230 so this is the means what you call reinforced details of the doubly reinforced beam so my dear friends hope you have understood this numericals and if you have any doubt please don't forget to put your means of point of view in the comment sections if you really like my video please don't forget to means uh, comment your view and share it to your friends thank you take care yourself bye bye